Welcome to Joy in Our Town. My name is Lisa Boldo and our issue today is crime. And we're learning about cyber and wireless crime. We're joined by technology and cybersecurity expert, Scott Schober. Scott, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for Thanks being here. Thanks for having us. me on. Awesome. Nice to be here. So, Scott, what kinds of cyber and wireless crimes are we seeing today? Well, certainly just the past two, three years, probably starting with Target. Now it's on everybody's mind. It's in the headlines, all the different breaches and the hacks. And, and most of it's directed toward credit cards or compromising our, our, our personal credentials, where we live, our social security number, even our medical records lately. So it's really widespread. And, and there's estimates that it's probably affecting about 97% of the United States. So pretty much safe to say you and I and the listeners have all been hacked at one point or another, compromised, or we don't know it yet, and it's a matter of time before we find out. So it's very widespread and affecting us across the board. Bank, credit card, certainly online security with our personal data. So it affects each and every person in every different way. And so what exactly is malware? Well, malware is a specific type. Envision it like a virus, something that's planted on your computer, or it could be your mobile phone as well or your tablet. Oftentimes, it's something that's targeted where it's placed without your knowledge of it, and then it could do destructive things. It could just simply uh, cause chaos on your computer. It could delete files, or in some cases, it could even lock your computer. There's a particular type of uh, strain of malware called ransomware. And it's just what it sounds like. It basically holds your computer hostage. And what it does is it locks it up. So now you can't access anything on your computer unless you pay the ransom. And it's usually around $300. Uh, the cyber thugs say you've got to pay it in bitcoins. So it, it's digital currency. So it allows them to remain anonymous so they can't be caught. And then if you don't pay it, they're not going to give you the magic key to unlock your files. So basically your hard drive, your computer is locked up and all your data, maybe your family photos, everything on there is locked. The same thing is true now. They have a version for mobile phones. And again, they can target mobile phones, so it locks your phone. Now you can't access your contacts, any of your data that's on there, your emails if it's a smartphone. Very, very scary. And, and again, they're waiting for bitcoins for payment. So it's something everybody should be careful of. And how do you get that is probably the scary part. It's these attachments that are put into email. They're embedded in emails. We were talking about it before. If you click on there, that downloads the malware into your phone or your mobile device or your computer, and that starts the problem. So be very leery of what you click on attachments. And so what type of software or um, cellular technology is vulnerable to this malware? Really everything. That's the part that's scary. It's so widespread. Our, our home computers, if you have a mobile phone, and it doesn't matter if you're an iPhone user or an Android user, whatever the operating system, they target both. For some of the ransomware, Android, as of late, has been targeted very heavily. Well over, uh, over 4 million Android users last year on the mobile devices were compromised there, and it's a growing trend. So it's something we've got to be really careful of. So security within our cell phones is definitely being compromised. Yeah, absolutely. And, and unlike our computers at home, we regularly update the security patches often on there to keep our computers safe so we're not in trouble. With mobile phones, we really don't up, update the operating systems regularly. So when there are security patches, make sure you update them to minimize your chance of getting in trouble. What is Sphere spear phishing, yeah. and how can we prevent responding to this spear phishing? That's a good point, because that's really how a lot of these malware attacks happen. It's targeted toward a user's email, and when you think of phishing is just kind of general, you're phishing, uh -huh. but then in this case, when it's spear phishing, it's a focused attack. So maybe it's an individual of high net worth value or targeted audience where they'll send these malicious links inside your email that you can click on, and again, it starts that malicious software, ransomware, whatever the strain is that they're trying to target. And these cyber thugs continually change their, their mode that they try to attack you, to fool you, to get around the virus checkers and the malware checkers. So you have to stay one step ahead of them always. But bottom line is never click on attachment if you don't know where it came from. Go right to the, the URL, put the, the, uh, the, the name in the browser, or familiar banking name if you're going there or something else. Don't click on the attachment in the email to get redirected because it will fool you. You really have to be aware yeah, of these be days. Yeah, very careful. So how are these hackers literally compromising the safety of our information? Well, how are they doing? Well, first of all, they're doing it from everywhere. Mostly it's based out of Russia, and they can do it again from 
being remote in their house, in their basement, and then they could tie in, they could again plant malware onto a server of a corporation, or if it's a targeted attack towards your computer. So we have to be careful. It's not necessarily the guy next door. Uh, the internet has really opened up the world to everybody, and especially hackers. They, they don't make much money maybe in a third world country. Now here's an opportunity for them to make hundreds of thousands of dollars stealing credentials, credit card, hacking into systems, selling your identity. Identity theft is another huge growing concern. So very, very widespread. So information can literally be stolen online or from your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. And some of these, uh, again, malware strains that they can plant, they're called key loggers. So what will happen is they'll plant it. And when you're typing, it's actually recording every keystroke you make. So imagine you're going to your bank and you type in your username, your password, and they're recording every one of those. And now remotely, they will pull that off. So there's a lot of dangers and things we have to be careful of. Uh, one of the most important things, whatever we log on to, is having a really strong password, too. Talk to us about that. that. That's one of the hugest problems. If you look at all the breaches, most of them have to do with the human element and that we're lazy. We don't create strong passwords. If your password is six characters, eight characters, it could usually be hacked with toolkits that hackers use in maybe mm. three to four seconds. If your password is 15 characters or more, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols, it will take years to hack. So obviously we want to do a long, complex password. That's very safe. What is a near-field communication and what is an NFC uh, payment? You could take your mobile phone, you can go up to a point of sale terminal and you can actually purchase something. And what that is, it's a communication where the antenna and energizes and sends back tokenized information that's secure. So it's not sending your credit card information, but rather tokenized information and your bank, your issuing bank, holds your credit card number. So now your credit card can't be compromised if you're using an Apple iPhone or an Android. So it's a secure means of paying that eventually mobile banking is going to start to become where we're doing everything from a mobile phone. How would we use that? How would we get access to one of these? You simply call the issuing bank and say, here's my credit card number. I want to be able to pay from my iPhone. Now you go to the register and you just simply swipe it. You bring it within about a foot and it'll register on the thing and it, it tokenizes it and then the bank will take the credit card and debit it from your account. So it's an app in other words, and then but it's connected to your bank somehow. Yeah, and it's integrated into the phone and the actual near field antenna, near field communication antenna is integrated already into all of the iPhones. And that's secure. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That was my next question, you know. So what is what exactly um, can be done? That's one of the ways, I guess, but what else can be done to make sure that our information stays secure on our computers? For example, yeah, or on I guess on our phones, the NFC yeah, well, is a way. Yeah, we use pay payments certainly from NFC. The, the negative side, because the bad guys remember always use the good, and they twist it. Uh. You, they, what they've been doing is taking the Target stolen credit card information, the Home Depot, and other breaches, and what they've been doing is registering a iPhone, for example, with a stolen credit card. And if the bank does not do a good security check then you could now take an illegal iPhone and purchase. And again, it's stealing. It's getting around the strong security Apple has in place. They're taking advantage of that because they see a vulnerability there. So we have to be careful. I always say limit the number of credit cards you use to one so you can monitor that statement very closely. Mm. Use cash where you can and, and be leery of sites that you don't know. Don't go on the computer and visit and go shopping on a lot of sites. Maybe one or two trusted sites that's safe. And you can always look for S when you're up in the browser, HTTPS for secure. And sometimes you'll see a little icon of a lock there as well. So be very leery of sites you've never purchased from. It's just a pretty big danger there. Didn't know that about the S. So HTTP S, S. For secure. Wow. Yep. For sites. Yep. And if you, if you notice you're clicking around and you go to a site, it may redirect you. Always look in the top browser there to be careful. You can be redirected to a fake site where they will take all the contents of a legitimate site, you would never know it. But if you look up in that browser, you could see it. Wow. So talk to us about social media accounts sure. and how um, they're being hacked into. Yeah, absolutely. Social media is good because it helps us all communicate with loved ones and friends, so on and so forth. The negative side of it, we all put too much information out there. Mm. If you think about it, if I go on to many people's LinkedIn profile, many people will have their address, their mobile phone number, a lot of people put their birth date. 
all of those things are often the security challenge questions when somebody's trying to hack into an account. So you're really giving them, like, the keys to your front door. It's very dangerous. So put a minimal amount of information on social media. If you're on your Facebook page, don't say we're going on vacation to Disney World. That's a clue for somebody, let's hack their computer through the wireless network, or even worse, let's kick the front door in and rob them while they're away. So putting information out there, once you put something out there, everybody has access to it. We need to remember that. So minimize it and don't put personal information. It's ironic. Social media, so we could share personal things. Too much personal things affects our security. So do you think these hackers kind of live on social media accounts trying to sure. get information from yeah. people? A absolutely. If they want to compromise your iCloud account where you're storing stuff up into the cloud, your data, your photos and things like that, what do they do? Well, they simply use software and what it does is scan those social media and it pulls everything about you your birth date, if there's any part of your social security, your address, where you live, all that information, and then they use that as putting it in to automatically try to break the password. Because most people associate their address, their spouse's name, their pet's name as part of their password. That could, most of it can be obtained by social media. So make sure that your passwords are very obscure because that's how they will get in and hack you. So passwords are super, super. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So Tell us, um, you know, I'm thinking about with all this stuff with the Home Depot and Target and all this stuff, I mean, what, what, is, what are some good tips that someone can do to literally start being more secure today? Oof, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Don't use your credit card. It sounds crazy. It sounds old school. But if you're going to buy, uh, you know, something at Home Depot, there's nothing wrong with paying $10 for it. Don't use debit cards. Don't they're use they're cards. more insecure than credit cards, harder to get your money back. Be careful at the ATM machine as well. If you're using a credit card to take money out, especially a debit card because they have skimmers, which will also compromise your information there as well. So when you're shopping, just be aware. When you're running that plastic, you got to have that statement to check because if you see any fraudulent charges, you need to call immediately so they're not compromised. Do you think it's a good idea? Because I know when people go shopping a lot, sometimes they'll use a debit card, grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a good idea maybe to use... A, a debit card if you don't have that much maybe in that account? Not even? I personally don't use it. We, we had our debit cards compromised, our credit cards compromised, our checking account compromised. So eventually we're all going to be compromised. So minimize the use of it. Um, the new technology chip and pin, that's what I got recently on my one credit card that I use. And what that is, it requires an additional pin when you're at the point of sale, the register. That's an additional, it's like two-factor authentication to make it even more secure. They're migrating the technology over to that, and by October of this year, that'll be implemented more fully. It'll be more secure for all of us. Can people request that sure. at their bank? Yep. The, yeah, the, With... they'll issue you a new card. You'll see it's like a little gold thing, and it's basically a microprocessor embedded in your credit card. Ah. And that will allow secure communication and the additional step of a PIN. And that makes it a little bit safer. It's still been hacked and breached, but, but not as much as a traditional MagStripe credit card. And they'll do this for regular credit cards as well as maybe debit cards? I don't know about the debit card okay, yet, but, but your but credit cards. The credit cards, they will. Wow, yeah. this has been amazing. You're watching Joy in Our Town, and we will continue our conversation with Scott Schober right after. Look, here's a charge for something within order. Good catch. I don't think you should ever pay for any bill unless you have first made sure that all the charges are correct. Speaking of which, have you heard of the latest Medicare scams? Mm -hmm. This happened to my friend. A man came to her door claiming he was from Medicare. He had a smooth line about helping seniors with the high cost of their medicines, but she had to give him her Medicare number right then before the deadline. Well, when she got her Medicare summary notice, it was full of charges for services she hadn't received. Turns out this guy was a scam artist. Medicare already has everyone's number. They wouldn't need to ask for it. Scams like these hurt every taxpayer, draining billions from Medicare and making it harder for people like us to get the health benefits we're entitled to. So I did something about it. I joined the Senior Medicare Patrol, where I work with other volunteers to teach my neighbors how to protect their Medicare numbers, review statements to spot false charges and detect errors, and report suspected fraud. Mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 58 years old. Eight years into the disease was when all the light went out. For me, it was heart-wrenching. Looking into the eyes of somebody with Alzheimer's sometimes, uh, you just don't see 
the, the, the person's soul is like gone. And it takes a toll on everyone. I mean, it's, it's, it's a depressing disease to watch unfold before your eyes. She actually thought those of us who were caring for her and who loved her most were her worst enemies. More and more responsibilities fell on my shoulders. This disease just ravages a family. It changes your life. The magnitude of it is indescribable. My mother taught me to be in the moment. We have to live in the moment with them. And I'm going to be with that person right now in this moment, wherever she is. Now is the moment. If we work together, we can stop this epidemic. Contact Bright Focus and learn more. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. My name is Lisa Boldo, and our issue today is crime. In this segment, we will discuss how to prevent cybercrime. We've been speaking with technology and cybersecurity expert Scott Schober. Scott, thank you so much for being with us again. Good to be here. Great. So how can someone avoid being a victim of cybercrime? Yeah, great question. Well, one area that, that pops into my head right away is we think about the wireless aspect. We're all connected wirelessly through our notebooks, through our mobile phones, and that's an area everything has Wi-Fi built into it now, and we've got to be really careful if we're traveling, maybe to a hotel, a resort, or even the Starbucks down the street, because everybody sees free Wi-Fi, and you want to click on that on our phone so we don't have to pay any money. But that's where the cyber thieves will target to make it very alluring so we could click on there, and as we're typing anything, say we're accessing stock market, bank information, anything confidential or proprietary, they could see what we're typing. They'll steal our information. So we want to be very cautious not to use free Wi-Fi. I'd rather pay for it where I know the password is secure at a hotel. I'll usually ask. Or you can even buy now a little hotspot that is a, a 4G LTE hotspot where you can connect to that with a secure password and know nobody's compromising your information. Wow. What forms can cyber crime take on? Really, it's, it's pretty wide gamut now. Think of something as common as drones. We see that. Drones are fascinating. Kids love to play with them. Certainly the military uses them. Recently, we, there was a, uh, a drone that landed on the White House lawn. Um, what happens, though, is cyber hackers know that they could use a drone and they're hard to find somebody. So they can attach, for example, a simple bridge access point, which, again, is a Wi-Fi little box. Imagine a black box on the bottom of a drone fly it over you, and if you have your mobile phone, guess what? They could try to hack into your mobile phone, your Wi-Fi connection, and again, take the contents of it off, your contact information, your emails, your text, or other information that might be just personal to you. It's a huge threat. It's called a man-in-the-middle attack. So they're impersonating the access point here, but in reality, they're right above you. You may not even know it. Could that happen if it was flying over your house as well Absolutely. and you were on your laptop? Sure. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so you've really got to be careful what you're doing wirelessly these days. It was very different a few years ago. Now they've used wireless to exploit and find the vulnerabilities to hack into your network or your mobile phone. So how can individuals prepare for these cyber threats that they may not even realize exist? Yeah, a nice point. They, they've got to think security now. Mm. It's very different. It's kind of like if you, if you had your house years ago, maybe you didn't always lock the front door. Nowadays, everybody locks the front door because they know the threat is there that somebody might break in at any time in the day. Wow. Uh, same thing now. We have to think about passwords. I always passwords, passwords, passwords. Make sure it's long and strong and hard to hack, because that's the number one means that people will get in and hack anything. It's through your weak password. So does it, is it always through a password? They have to figure out your password? Pretty much. And, and, and the reason is why, because so many people have weak passwords. What's the number one most popular password in the world? It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yes. The second one is password one, two, three. So when you think about what most people are using for passwords or their wireless access point at home, admin. Anybody could hack that. Those are, they feed into these programs, these hackers. They may sit outside your house or remotely. They'll feed in a list of most common used passwords, and it will try each one and go through millions of passwords until it can break in and compromise your account. Once they're in, as we mentioned before, they'll plant the malware. They'll start stealing information, your data. So passwords that are strong are really, really important. Can you give us an example of what does a strong password look like? Sure. Uh, it would be something that's kind of nondescript. You'll never find it in a dictionary. 
number one. It will have uppercase characters, lowercase characters, numbers, as well as symbols, maybe a question mark, an asterisk, typically 15 characters or longer. Wow. So it's something that you or I probably cannot easily remember. Then you know it's a good password. The other huge problem is password reuse. And ask yourself, have you ever reused the same password on multiple sites? Yeah. Well, once your password is compromised, say it's a Facebook password, it's compromised, a cyber thief will now take that into, again, a software toolkit and will apply that password to every different site out there to find another password where maybe you reused it. Again, they can compromise your information. Maybe use that same password on your login for a bank account. Maybe it's your iTunes account. So they will check each one, and that way they get many accounts compromised in a matter of an hour or two. That's okay. very scary. So, Don't reuse your same password. Yeah, would it be just as easy as, I'm just saying for our viewers right now who are thinking, oh my goodness, you know, on my banking, it's the same password as maybe my, you know, WordPress website or whatever. Go, they can change it immediately, exactly. and it's that, it would just be effective immediately. Exactly, yeah. A unique, okay. distinct password for each account, especially banking, stock market, any type of information that you consider confidential, wow. unique password for each of them. You should also change them every so often. Talk about that. Every 30 to 90 days, they recommend changing it. Really? How do you remember it is probably the next biggest question everybody wonders. I can't remember a big, long 15 variable Absolutely. password. Well, there are programs to help you, a program called LastPass, okay. where you need to remember a master password you enter that in, and now it pulls up all of your passwords, your login credentials and your passwords. It's a good way to do it. It's very secure. It's encrypted. If you forget that master password, you're in trouble, though, or if you ever give that out to anyone, now they've got all your passwords. So be careful. Or you could do the simple method. I use a black book, a book that I write down all my login credentials, and I keep that locked away in a safe in a locked office, and that way I always have access to it, but nobody can compromise. A physical book. A physical, old school. <laughs> Nothing old school. Old school, I it love works. that. It works. Okay, wow. It doesn't cost you anything either. So what happens if an email gets hacked? What private information, I mean, we've kind of said, you know, what private information, can they just steal everything? Pr pretty much everything. All your identity. Think about it. What do you put in your emails? What do I put in my emails or, or listeners? You put in everything. We even sometimes, in our emails, will send passwords. Send it to home so we remember. Oh, what's, what's the credit card you're going to buy groceries with? Oh, let me send it. So all this information is flying back and forth as well as maybe a PDF document, an Excel, Microsoft. Maybe it's our bank statement. Maybe our social security number's in there. So anytime emails are compromised, there's a danger. Plus, remember, where are emails stored? They're stored on a remote server. Could be in the cloud, which means it could be in, you know, India. Could be on the other side of the world cyberspace wow. and a lot of times there's redundancy in the big data center so your email may reside here as well as over here so when, once we put it in writing it's out there so we've got to be careful what we put in writing my goodness so the password info I mean just from or what kind of information can be gotten just from finding out somebody's password that's what we're talking about is it sure well you could hack into someone's email account so now you can see obviously all their correspondence back and forth even PDFs Sure, yeah, any documents, any type of data, any photos, any PDFs, and once they hack in there, they have access to it. And just like the cloud, remember the, the scandal with the celebrities where compromised photos yes. were taken from the cloud. What happened there? It was simple. The, the username was their email address, which anybody could figure out, and then their password. In all those cases, they were simple passwords that somebody was able to social media and pull off the website and everything on their Twitter feed, their Facebook, their LinkedIn, and eventually figure out their password. Now they got on there, they stole the photos, posted them, sold them, and the rest is history. Now you've got a book that was written. Can you tell us about that? Sure, yeah. It, it, it's being printed. It'll be out in less than two months. It's called Hacked Again. It, it's our personal account, my personal account of how our company was compromised, our checking, mm. our credit card, our Twitter feed, our website, and then all the best practices, what we learned from that and to share with people so it doesn't happen to them. So what are some of the the tips and tricks that you have sure. in your book that you can share with us. Well, I, I talk a lot about not putting too much out on social media. That's yeah. huge. I go into a whole chapter just talking about what strong passwords are so you won't get hacked and give a lot of examples of that. I talk about identity theft, how you can prevent being a victim of that. Um, I, on and on about all these different best practices 
ransomware, as we discussed, how you could prevent being a victim of that, what you could do to protect yourself Can if you it does happen. Can you talk about that for a sure. minute again, ransomware? Yeah. What is that? Ransomware, again, is if, if you have your mobile phone or, okay. your, or your computer and somebody puts a link embedded into an email and you click on that, it downloads the malware, malicious software, and they hold your computer hostage. And they say, you got to pay us in bitcoins, which is anonymous digital currency, so that you can unlock your files, unlock your hard drive on the computer, and get your data back. So it's like extortion, bribery. And these cyber thugs are very, very successful. Millions and millions of dollars they've been able to get from corporations and individuals. And now they're targeting usually people of high net worth value so they can get even more money. It's, it's terrible. Are it's people terrible. really paying these they people are. Yeah, to I, get their... But, I mean, what's the guarantee that they're going to get their information? There is no guarantee. And then once they do have it back, do they really want it? These people still have their information. Yeah, so they stole your information. There's no guarantee you'll get it back if you do even pay. So it's kind of a hopeless case. I always encourage people, and I focus this in the book, Hacked Again, back up your hard drive and your data regularly. <sighs> so if they do compromise and lock your computer, your phone doesn't matter. You've got the backup here. You reinstall it, delete it, and you're safe. If you don't have a backup, you're in big trouble. So backup regularly on your computer, on your mobile phone as well, your contacts and information. So, and that way, for doing that, backing up information, say, from your mobile phone, how do you do that? You just yeah. plug it in and download it? Yeah. It could be to the cloud, it could be wireless, or you could simply plug it in, usually a USB connection to your computer, and it'll sync it and pull it off in a matter of a minute or so. And then if you did get hacked with these thugs, you don't have to worry about exactly. trying to pay them or whatever. You just change your information. Delete delete what you had on your hard drive okay. and reinstall your backup over and now you're good to go and you're much safer then and now you're not going to be facing these bribery charges and not knowing if you're going to get your the key to unlock or lock this up. Yeah. So let's just review or recap some of the a couple of the most important things that our viewers could do right now to protect themselves. Sure, I, I would. I always encourage people go back to your social media accounts, the settings. Look at the privacy settings. Minimize how much information you put out to the public. Birth dates, your address, anything like that that might give somebody information about you where they could compromise you or your credentials. Very dangerous. So minimize that information. Make those adjustments. Easy to do. Doesn't cost you anything. Go back and look at all your passwords. Update them immediately, especially if they're five, six, seven, eight characters long only, if there's a name in there, any common words in the dictionary. Instead, you could use past phrases, you know, the quick brown fox ran down the road. Take the first letter in each of that, alternate uppercase, lowercase, add some numbers, symbols. Now you've got a secure password. Very, very useful so you won't get hacked. And, and be careful even with identity theft. All that information that you put out there, if you have documents, banking, social security number, shred your documents that you don't need, taxes, after so many years, shred them because somebody will rifle through the garbage. They'll put that together and they can compromise your identity and then they'll go take credit out in your name. You'll get a big fat bill and they're off to Hawaii. And then as far as credit cards, mm -hmm. just you said maybe use... Monitor them very carefully. Minimize these. If you can narrow it down to one credit card, maybe your favorite credit card, you're better because it's easy to monitor one credit card statement. If anything happens, you can immediately address it. When you have two, three, four, five credit cards... You're going to get in debt probably. You'll spend beyond your means, mm. mistake one. But even worse, you can't monitor and you can't adjust all that. So it's very dangerous. So that's really helpful. Credit cards, mobile phones, Internet. I mean, my goodness, these cyber, it's, it, this is a really, really big thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. huge, yeah. That's so. just the surface. If you dig in deeper, it's going to get worse, especially as our homes get connected. <gasps> Wirelessly, we have thermostats we can control remotely from our mobile phone our cars have wireless integration in it. Now imagine the worst case scenario, you're driving down the road and a wireless hacker targets you and slams the brakes on. Has the airbag ignite? Those type of things are possible. They're not happening out there to the public so we don't wanna say don't drive, but it's possible they could do these things if they're targeting individuals. So we just have to be aware of this and be careful. Thank you so much for all your information today. Just fabulous. Thank you so much for watching Joy in Our Town. We will see you next time.
This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.